So uh, we have Adèle Adoud uh, coming to, uh, to pitch for Infinite Orbit and uh, David Henry from, uh, from Exotrail. And uh, Roger, unfortunately, uh, would have loved to be with us, but is having a little bit of a trouble. So if he comes back, we'll be able to resume with him. If not, I uh, will leave the floor to you, Adele. Thank you. Hello, everyone. I think there's a video supposed to start, and then you'll hear me. Yes, and we will have to give you this, by the way, so that you can change your slide at will. Thank you. What's coming is better. <laughs> oh, okay. Good. Yeah, um, thank you for inviting me. Um, Adele Hadoud, I'm going to be speaking about the infinite orbits. Uh, we are based in Toulouse. Uh, we're a startup five years old, and we do in orbit servicing. This means that we design, build, own, and operate assets we send to space we call servicers. Typically, what you see to your right. It's a space servicer that we send to space to service other assets who are already there. Typically, what you see to your right, to your left, sorry. We service them so they can live longer, so they can operate better, and so they can leave the space clean after they finish. Uh, this is the way we look at space. Uh, space today, in a nutshell, uh, Leo and Geo, but there are more assets in terms of value in Geo. Geo today is probably uh, 400 to 500 satellites worth $100 billion, still growing. Uh, and we look at it like a, uh, a giant industrial zone full of industrial assets that needs to be serviced. And this is what we do. We focus in Geo because this is where we find today assets that are worth servicing. Um, we look at the market of servicing assets uh, in a simplistic way. Uh, services that require docking to the assets and services that don't require docking to the assets. In both cases, you need to rendezvous with the asset. Uh, for the non-docking uh, services, the frequency preservation we are active in, space situational awareness, knowing what's happening, who's doing what in space, from space, having ears and eyes in space to survey the space. And if you dock to an asset, there is an immediate market of life extension. You can keep an asset longer in space, so it can operate longer after it doesn't have fuel anymore. And there are other use cases to uh, clean the orbit in orbit uh, assembly or different future use cases that may come in the future. For all these uh, uh, use cases, we have developed uh, two types of servicer. The first one called Orbit Guard. Uh, 
I'm proud to share the picture. This is me with the first nano satellite ever, uh, commercial at least, that we know of flying to Geo. In uh, less than a month, exactly, I think more than a month, April 10th, I'll be uh, with SpaceX, Cape Canaveral, with a direct Geo launch. And this small satellite will be launched directly to Geo and uh, will start operating from there on. We have more satellites of Orbit Guard, more servicers being uh, assembled or being contracted. So, uh, so far, it's a successful story that we would like to push further. We're working on a docking servicer, the video that you've seen before, we call Endurance that should be able to fly in end of 25 or beginning of 26, so we can do docking with, uh, with geo assets. Okay, all these services, they required, of course, many technologies from many partners around the room, but a few technologies, quite innovative technologies, we are focused on that will enable the in-orbit servicing in general. Uh, first, the navigation and the rendezvous. You need to be able to rendezvous with your uh, client, and you need to be able to rendezvous in a cost-effective manner. Rendezvous happens already, but with uh, uh, expensive sensors, with a complex solution. The aim of our company is to make it very simple and cost effective because that's the only way we can open such a big market that you've seen before. You need to be able to dock in a safe manner and you need to be able to do some robotics so you can act in space. I'd like to talk a bit more about the rendezvous piece itself, which is the, uh, the real enabler for uh, in-orbit servicing. We've built a camera this big, 400 grams, that uses seven watts, and that uses AI, a lot of embarked AI, so we can autonomously navigate in space. This is flying for the first time to GEO in a few weeks, and then it has more flights after all. So with a simple camera that is trained to know and how to navigate in a very autonomous way in space, we should be able in the future to have a satellite this big be able to uh, perform rendezvous missions and all the use cases that will go around the rendezvous. Um, we're a truly global company. What you see here are all the countries where we have uh, signed customers. And a lot of them are paying customers. So we are uh, based in France, we're European. Uh, but the market for us, the way we see it, is like a satellite sees the Earth. We don't see boundaries, we don't see, and we would like to work with uh, any country that we are uh, able to work with. Okay, this is probably my best slide. Um, we're very proud of our team. We've been working together for the last uh, five years. It's a combination of uh, innovative uh, young people with a bit older, more experienced people like me and, uh, uh, and, and Yasmin um, here. And uh, we're now 15 or maybe 20 people based in Toulouse. We have more nationalities than we have people. Uh, everyone has on average more than one passport. And uh, I think we are close to 30% uh, female ratio. So, uh, you know, not to what I personally uh, wanted, but I think better than the average of the, of the industry. Uh, I'd like to finish with a bit of history and a bit of, uh, of a vision. Uh, this is our history, uh, and I show this slide because it's uh, sometimes counterintuitive. We started in the United States. The idea of the company started in uh, Columbia University, 2017, and we worked a lot with, uh, with Stanford. I started as a business angel. I invested in the company, and then when I started uh, growing, um, we took a joint decision to bring the company and, uh, and put it in, uh, in Toulouse. And we start working with uh, organizations that I would like to thank, ESA and, uh, and the CNES. Uh, and I think next year, I would like to have the, maybe the logo of uh, Dassault. We started the uh, uh, discussion, Dassault system, pardon, without discussing to use a 3D experience. And I think it will allow us to build the future generation of our servicers. 
And the last slide is a bit of a vision. Uh, we're doing this because we want to own and operate a lot of assets in space. We really want to, uh, to be the champion of in-orbit servicing so we can service everything that is in space, so we can keep space uh, a safe and an optimized uh, place to operate. Thank you very much. Thank you, Adel. Thank you, thank you, Adel, for a very inspiring pitch and, uh, and a very nice video. We look forward to welcoming you into the 3D Experience Club.